So how do you explain evolution to somebody who refuses to understand evolution? How do you explain evolution to someone who compares abigenesis to stumbling upon a fully formed 747 fully fueled as if it just popped into existence? Like that would be the same thing. How do you explain evolution to somebody who thinks that the human mind was either created by a grand creator or it was just a random collection of molecules that suddenly came together to form the human mind out of nothing with no preceding event? How do you explain evolution to these people? Sadly, I don't think you can. Hello, I'm Tommy, friendly neighborhood atheist, and I've tried. I've tried explaining evolution in very fundamental ways. Not that I really can explain evolution. I'm not an evolutionary biologist by any means. I understand evolution, and I try to give a clue to intrigue, to give something to latch on to as a leaping point, a jumping point, to find out more. Because evolution is not something that requires faith. It's not something that you need to believe in. Evolution, like gravity, is something that is. Now, I keep getting thrown the idea that no one has recreated life or has created life from nothing in a laboratory. And I point out that gravity has not been created in a laboratory either, but they don't seem to see the comparison between the theory of evolution and the theory of gravity. And yes, gravity is a theory. Yes, there are laws of gravity, but it is also a theory, as is electricity, electrical theory. Electricity, very real, is a theory. So how do you explain to people something that they just fundamentally refuse to believe. Well, I, I like I said, I don't think you can. You can try, but it's, it's like beating your head against the wall. And it gets painful after a while. I've got a terrible headache right now. What I've done is plead with people, don't spread this nonsense to your children or to anyone's children. You can believe what you want. You can believe that God created man out of dirt. You can believe that intelligent design is a real thing. Just keep it to yourself. Let the children be educated. Now, they'll throw back like, well, don't spread your evolution. It's like, well, I don't spread evolution. I just, it's the schools. Well, proper schools do. You go to school, you learn about evolution, or at least you should. But I don't <laughs> try to force that belief on anyone. I point out what evolution is. I point out evidence of evolution. I point out fossils and dinosaurs and, and just all the things that show that evolution is real. That's what I point out to people. Now, creation, you can point out that you believe that God created everything, but you can't point to any evidence. You can't point to anything. You can't say this is evidence for creation. This is evidence for intelligent design other than saying, it's so complicated, it couldn't possibly have happened by accident. As if that is any kind of rational argument or even a rational point of view. How is it rational to tell anyone it is so complicated, it couldn't have possibly have happened by itself, like a 747. As, as if that makes any kind of sense. Let me tell you a little something about a 747, appearing out of nothing. Now, the idea that, uh, you know, came out of nothing, is the idea that, you know, somebody saw a bird fly and thought, oh, I'd like to fly too, and made a 747 out of nothing. First time out of that. Well, it didn't work that way. We have 747s, that is true. How did we get 747s? Well, it's a long story. 
that goes back thousands of years. Yes, thousands of years to get to 747. Probably tens of thousands. Way before the Bronze Age. Yes, before the Bronze Age is where the story of the 747 starts. Because they had to know about metallurgy before they could make 747. In fact, there are thousands, if not millions, if not billions of small technological advances that had to have happened before you could get to a 747. I mean, just an insurmountable number of generations of devices had to have been created to get to a 747. A lot like evolution. As I've stated in other videos, evolution is everything. Evolution happens with everything. Everything that we have is literally a process of evolution. Nothing just, you know, was created out of whole cloth, out of just, you know, nobody decided one day, I'm going to make a football, and there was a football. There's nothing you can point to, pretty much, that it just... <laughs> like everything, there was a need, there was a niche, there was a something need to be filled, and that's the evolutionary process. Everything evolves. Everything biological, every technological, even language evolves. So making the argument that abogenesis is like finding a painting on a beach is just stupid and aggravating and it just shows that you really, really don't want to know what evolution is. So I'm declaring you're a lost cause. All I can ask you is do not teach this nonsense to your children or anyone's children. You can talk about it in, in church, but it's not logical. It is not rational. It is not helping anyone. It is making people stupid. So, I'm sorry that you're a lost cause. And I'm sorry, I don't believe in evolution. I accept evolution because of the facts that have been presented. And that is not faith. That is reason and rational thought behind understanding something. I'm Tom, your friendly neighborhood atheist. And uh, I'm sorry for your loss of your mind. I hope you get it back. You can go to school and find it again.